guys welcome back to the channel we're here in the carbon tent getting ready to work on a tutorial first tutorial of 2024 and guess what we're going to be making a sitting bear we're going to do a tutorial on just a small sitting bear and it's going to be something simple all right we are going to use two tools maybe three we're going to use an ms170 all right it's got a quarter pitch sprocket with a quarter pitch 14 inch bar and a 43 gauge quarter pitch chain not a dime tip bar <coughs> i'm also going to use the steel ms 193c with a quarter pitch sprocket quarter pitch uh 43 gauge chain and this one has a dime tip bar so you can do all this with a 170 okay we're going to block with a 170 we're going to detail with the uh, 193 so a regular small quarter pitch bar and then a dime tip bar and then we're probably going to use a torch just to round off the piece with a little bit of color no power all right keeping it simple and trying to do this at a very beginner level as usual we'll have two camera views got the one on my shoulder and we'll have this stagnant view now i said three tools right the torch the saws you're gonna need a jaw horse you guys safety gear right safety is always in your hands if you're trying this stuff it's up to you uh where you're you know read your safety manual for chainsaws you should be having chaps boots gloves ear eye protection all that good stuff now i'm going to be carving out of a quartered log new carvers if you want your stuff to not split as bad all right it's wood it's always going to split. how do i prevent my stuff from splitting don't carve anything and it won't split if you don't carve anything it won't split wood always splits it dries and it splits you lower the risk of splitting though if you use a quartered log so this was a big full round log right and i cut it into a quarter four pie shaped pieces came out of that piece of wood okay and i got a whole bunch of those i got some halves and i got some other ones but for this video we'll do a sitting bear then we're going to do another tutorial on an owl of the same size you guys can see this is only like the size of my hand okay this isn't big we're talking like eight to ten inches tall you know maybe five inches across here about three to four inches front to back not big <clears throat> we'll do this tutorial though um the next tutorial is going to be an owl and then i'm going to create a tutorial on the little moose that i've been creating and actually been selling really well but that is only going to be available to my members so members you can look forward to that mini moose uh carving tutorial all right enough talking these tutorials are long enough let's start uh let's start gripping and ripping guys all right guys we've got our quartered piece secured in the jaw horse we're gonna make this first cut and we're coming in and we're kind of swooping away if you guys notice the top of the jaw horse here is all metal i do have a video on how to create some wooden safety pieces there um so you guys don't jack up your your bar and chain i'll have that linked right up above so if you haven't done it yet go there check that out put that on your jaw horse and then come back okay i just haven't put it on this jaw horse in the carving yard but we'll soon i know i'm talking through this but if you guys watch you can see exactly what I'm doing. That is the joy of two camera angles. Just some light swoops on the back of the head. We're coming in to cut the front of the ears. Now it's like, geez, why a small bear? Why are we trying to carve a small bear? There's a lot, in my opinion, a lot of chainsaw control has to go into it when you're creating a small piece. Because a small mess up, you lose an ear. You lose a nose. Your whole angle's off. If you're working on a big piece, you can just carve it away and make it work. But a small piece, there is less room for error. Okay, so why should we start with something harder as a small piece compared to a large piece? Well, it's not necessarily that it's harder, but I believe it's going to help you with your skill set. This motion right here, I call this scraping or sanding with the nose of the bar. You're just working it back and forth, keeping the weight of the saw up, and you're just kind of scraping round in those edges just a touch okay guys so like i was saying you know why are these little bears important one they sell better they sell quick they sell fast they sell easy we're talking about a 30 to 40 dollar item depending on how much detail you put into it you might even start off at 20 bucks right the goal though in my opinion would be you know 30 40 maybe 45 bucks at least you know like that is that's where you're at but those sort of items sell well at craft fairs and little things. 
So if you guys need more of an exact cut by cut, I do have a lot of videos, um, with a little less other talking, but you know, I'm trying to help you guys out on just, just different levels in your mindset and things as well as you're getting into carving as a beginner. Now, here we're coming in and we're just lopping off the front of that. See how that cut didn't go all the way down? We swooped it away. Straight, angled, second angle for the snout. So there's two angles going on here. Watch on this side. Straight, angled away, angled away, now cut. Okay, so there's again two angles going on there. We want that head to round down underneath the snout a little bit. So we cut an angle down and an angle down. Now, if you look carefully at this piece and the pieces you are removing, what shape do you see over and over and over? A weird triangle or wedge. Those are the pieces you should be removing. Triangular or wedge-like shapes, okay? Just keep that in mind. So here, you should be able to feel the nose of the bark pop through to that line. You don't want to overcut in the snout. There's not a lot of room for error here, so it's better to go shallow than too far and make an overcut when you're cutting the side out for the side of the nose, okay? Just making a little up cut to remove material. Now, if you are working on a piece that's about three inches taller than this and just a little bit girthier, the nose of this bar will fit in there a little bit better, okay? Like, I, like I've said to you guys before in past videos, you know, you're not going for an exact copy. You're going for the idea. Okay, so you're not trying, I mean, heck, you want to make one or two bears exactly like mine? Go for it. But after that, it's up to you to detail that piece to add a little bit more pizzazz, right? A little more of your style of who you are. So when people look at it, they go, hey, that's a John piece. That's a Tim piece or a Sue piece or whatever. You know, they're not like, oh, hey, that's a Kyle piece. Well, no, I made it. You, you, you know what I'm saying? So just think about that. But as a very beginner, you know, what, what I'm really trying to have you guys do is get down your basic cuts, basic concept, and saw control. I've said it before, I don't consider myself a professional. I'm just a dude having fun and sharing it with you guys. I mean, I don't know. I enjoy making videos and helping you guys out. Hopefully these videos are helping you out. So here, we're making a cut just below the ear. All right, guys. We're going to make an up cut. The nose of the bar is out past the bear there. And something to keep in mind, guys, you're not like just lightly holding the saw. You've got a good grip, not a white knuckle grip, but a good solid grip all the way around. Um, it's tough carving. I had someone pointed out on my other channel. You see how my thumb is on the right here? The gates open is what they say. And the tough part with that is, is if this saw kicks back, I might not engage the break with the way I'm holding it. Now, if you take that thumb and tuck it underneath and it touches your pointer finger, when the saw kicks back, you have a better chance of engaging that chain break. Now, for me, this is bad habit and it is kind of a bad practice to be showing you guys, you know, this is how I hold my saw. Carvings can be tough because you got to have different angles, but just keep that in mind. So just now, I know I talked through it, but we've blocked out our line. We've only gone in about half an inch above the arm, about half an inch below the arm, and then we did an up cut, revealing the side of the arm there. I got to make an adjustment here and make it a little bit easier to get into um, the one side of the bear. Love this Rockwell jaw horse. So easy to just maneuver pieces around just makes life so much easier it's so much easier and screwing things down and stuff like that i will have a link through amazon where you guys can purchase this um, i'll also have like other tools things i use or things that are similar you guys buy through those links and they do help support the channel also keep in mind i have a full link down below through teespring where you guys can get channel merch this year i'm going to really really try to come up with some new shirt designs and things like that for you guys 
Um, and those people are interested, and I know it's been the same logo forever, right? But we'll keep the logo shirt, and uh, hopefully we'll have some new designs coming out here really, really soon. I will admit, I love having the two camera angles on here for you guys, because if I do miss a cut or I'm just rambling on about other stuff, you can see just about every angle. First hand view is on the right. If you look on the left, you can see more angles of the saw. So I like to say these videos aren't one and done. You know, you can watch it once, get the idea, and you're able to watch and pause and see the angles, you know. Here, what I'm doing is using the nose and scraping underneath the neck, chin area, chest area, and removing material, and that's making those arms look like they're popping out a little bit more. So again, you might be thinking, you know, well, I don't want to start with little pieces. I want to start with large pieces. Or maybe you don't. You know, I've in the past, I've seen a lot of people, all they can get are small pieces to start carving with. So <laughs> I take that back. I, I think starting with smaller pieces is the way to go. If you learn saw control now with smaller pieces, I feel like you'll have less mistakes when you get into larger pieces where people are paying a lot more money for it. So these cuts I'm making here, I flipped the whole bear upside down because we don't have our safety guards, our wooden safety guards on the jaw horse that I talked about earlier. And I don't want to cut into metal with my chain, right? So I'm thinking about the bottom side of the paws and the shape of the, the bottom side of the upper paws that are coming down between the legs. And then we're thinking about where the legs are and the paws. Now he's sitting on his butt and the paws are like up and flat out. So you'll see the pads on the bottom of his feet, okay? And his upper hands are like, kind of just drooping down between the legs. So we have to remove this material right here. And sometimes one big cut works out well, but sometimes multiple little cuts like this, right? See, we take out two pieces, gone, and then clean it up. Sometimes that's just easier. So that's that basic shape. Really, I should have picked it up and showed you guys, but. Sometimes it's the afterthought, you know. Ooh, got close there. Didn't hit it, but it was close. All right, guys, we grabbed the dime tip bar, put our bear upside down, and we're just scraping around the bottom side of those feet. All right, even our little bears. Bears don't have hard edges. Round them over a little bit. This is gonna help with that detail on other projects later. This is also gonna bring you out of the realm of square bears and start having your bears be more of that cuddly, cute, teddy bear style. And it's gonna work you toward realism. Realism is always my goal, not with tiny pieces like this, but to get more realistic with larger pieces. Little pieces sell better when they are cute and cuddly. So we just use the nose of the bar to scrape a cross, kind of making an indent. And now we're making four little indents to kind of show where the pads are. Now this is like reverse carving the pads. Bear pads usually stick off the feet, but in this case we're making them concave in. Um, it's just a simpler, easier way to to do it. Um, it's something that you know people find cute and cuddly. Clean that up. Give them a flip. Try to fumble around here, apparently. <laughs> Not everything goes smoothly all the time, though. It just doesn't. You know? Boom. Thing hits the ground. Turn the saw off. Grab the bear. Like, leave this in here and you'd be like, well, why would you do this? What a waste of time. Just to show, like, not everything goes to plan perfectly all the time. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. It never does. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to mess things up continue on with that piece, right? You accidentally cut the ear off, you accidentally cut the nose off, or it breaks. That's okay. Leave it off, finish the detail work, set it aside, then make a new one. If you don't go all the way through to those detail pieces, how do you know you're not going to make that mistake in the next one where the ear stays on, but then you mess up the hands, the paws, the furring. Just saying. If you guys are still here, 
be sure to give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe. We're over 20,000 subscribers. And before the end of this month, I'm planning on putting a video together on how to enter to win that brand new steel MS-170. I have not forgot about it. Thank you so much to everybody. Also, real quick, right here, we are just working on rounding and shaping, and then now we're cutting in the necklines, okay? This is going to give your bear more depth. This looks like fur, overlapping fur in the neck. So, just over 20,000 subscribers, all because you guys liking, sharing, commenting, and watching videos all the way through. As I learn more about the algorithm and trying to grow a YouTube channel, wow, it's crazy the amount of you that actually watch videos start to finish. By watching videos start to finish, it tells YouTube that my videos are worth something to the algorithm and that people enjoy them. It's so crazy because a lot of my other, I do have a lot of videos that don't get watched all the way through and they don't perform well on YouTube. Tutorials though, you guys rock. You watch it all the way through. And they are probably one of, well, tutorials are the biggest channel grower for me, um, which is awesome. One, two, I absolutely love doing it. So love teaching on here. Right here with the snout guys, just a quick scraping motion to round that edge. And now we're just scraping up to kind of be like where the eye would be. Now, don't get me wrong, we're not going to have like these highly detailed eyes because we're not busting out a bunch of power tools. Once this bear is done, if you have a die grinder, a uh, Dremel or something, and you want to carve eyes in, absolutely go for it. I have other videos that can walk you through that process. I'm trying to keep this mostly chainsaw work, though, today. So, again, going in and just sort of using the nose of that bar, the underside, to sort of make a pocket and then make like an eyelid sort of area. Now with that, if you weren't gonna use other tools, you could just hand paint some eyes in there, and you're done. Here we're getting into putting in the nose. If you look on the left, the high angle of the nose, low angle where the saw is, and then you just round up to that line. Quick angle cut up, and then you're gonna go ahead and do the same for the other side. Now you can leave the face alone. I'm just gonna put some little tufts on there, a little bit of furring, just kissing the side with the side of the bar. These are not straight cuts. Look at both sides of the screen to get angles of the saw. Rounding over any hard edges. If he looks more rounded, he looks more cute, cuddly, and plush, right? Like a teddy, a plush teddy bear. People like that. They want things to look cute and cuddly, especially when they're like smaller pieces, unless you are a highly uh, advanced, detailed carver that can do realism, you know, um, then cute and cuddly is the way to go. Also big deal, don't forget to put those initials in. Claim your piece, put your initials in it. If you guys have carved fresh or wet green pieces, it's gonna to be tough to burn like mine. You can see all the inconsistency here. Carve the piece, let it sit a couple days, let it sit a week under cover, not in the elements, not in the sun. You'll be able to add your details but easier and burn it easier. Now, when you're done and you look at this piece, you guys probably can get you know 25 bucks for these, $30 for these. If you wanna get a little bit more, use your Dremel, use your other tools, put some eyes in them, Define things a little bit more, detail it up a little bit more, get yourself up to, you know, $40, $45. Possibly, eh, $45 might be pushing it, but it's really up to you. Hopefully this video has really helped you guys out. And uh, hang in there, and I'll give you guys a close shot. All right, guys, I want to bring you in close so you can see this guy a little bit better. There's not a ton of crazy detail, but the idea is a simple, easy little bear a few beginners where you can start to use that dime tip bar and start getting a little bit of more control out of your smaller regular bar maybe you can see them better out here right a little better okay so now right there's those eyes simple eyes you take a little paint paint them in there you can paint the nose black if you want but the idea is to keep it simple practice saw control make those cuts and as you can see we got this little piece and obviously tidy it up like if you have saber tooth burrs and you want to add more detail you can this really is just to help you get like that concept down with just your saw 
and adding a little bit of detail. For me, I'm not gonna go ahead and do like a ton of furring and all that, because this is a small piece. And I'm not, you know, we're not gonna make $100 on this. We're looking to sell it for 40, 40 bucks if we're lucky, you know, 30, 40 dollars. So hopefully this will help you guys out carving up this small little bear. Again, like I was saying, keep an eye out for the next couple tutorials. We're gonna do a little owl next, and then we'll have that moose carving for the members. So all members, keep an eye out for that video when that pops up. Appreciate you guys watching. Give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.